Hello, and welcome back to the home studio. I'm your host, Mr. Wilbur. Like my hat, it's lime green, and this thing on there is called a slee stack. It's in, uh, it's from an old TV show. When I say old, I mean old. That I used to watch when I was a kid, and these were the bad guys. It was called, the show was called Land of the Lost. And these are the bad guys. They were called slee stacks. And all they ever did is go sss, sss, sss. But I thought it was cool. So, anyway, fourth and fifth grade. This week is going to be the second nine week, or second week of the fourth nine weeks. I'll get it right. And it's called the yin yang. Now, the yin yang is a symbol in. Uh, Chinese beliefs as well as other cultures that uh, it means order and chaos. Some people say it means good and evil, and that's not wrong, okay? But um, I prefer to, to, to call it order and chaos. And the belief is in every bit of order or in every bit of good, there is a little evil or there is a little bit of chaos. And in every bit of chaos... There is a little bit of order. So in other words, all if uh, even in bad, there's a little good. Makes it reminds me of Darth Vader. Remember at the end when Luke, uh, at the end of Return of the Jedi, if you guys are Star Wars fans, how he found the good left in his father, Anakin. It's it's kind of like that. So it's it's a really cool. When I was when I was a boy, when I was a teenager, we used to draw them all over everything. I don't know why, but we did. Hello, Reese. So first thing you need to start with is a giant, hello Albert, pushing me back. There's the dogs, guys. Here they, they said, hey, my boy. Whoa, Albert, I would like to be able to work with the boys and girls today. All right. So hello, Reese. Yes, yes, yes. You get your lovings too. Yes, get your lovings. Okay, so the first thing we need to do when we do the yin yang is we need to start off with a, a pretty good sized circle. Now I have a stencil at school that I used but I don't, I didn't bring it home with me. Okay. Then what you have to do is you got to kind of make it look like a Pepsi symbol. The Pepsi symbol looks like a yin yang. So what I'm doing is I'm starting here and I'm kind of coming over and I'm back. So it kind of looks like the Pepsi symbol or a baseball or tennis ball, actually. And here you want to put another circle. Hello, Arisa. And in this area here, you want to put another circle. Hello, Arisa. Yeah, I see you. I see you. I see you. Okay. Now, once you get that part done, you don't have to do this, but I would suggest, that means I'm, I think it'd be a good idea, but like I said, you don't have to, you don't want to. It would be a good idea to go ahead and trace all what you have right here with a nice fat black marker. If you don't have a fat black marker, a crayon, or even a regular pen, just you want to make sure that you, you understand that this is the black and that this is going to um, make it nice and solid so that way you can work the rest of your magic on this, okay? Now, we did the shattered drawing a couple projects back, at least started it with most of you. So you've got to make, you've got to decide, okay, where do I want my order? Where do I want my chaos? All right. So I'm going to say that this is going to be my order and this is going to be my chaos. So in my order, there is a little bit of chaos. And the way we're going to do this is that we're going to make it look like it is a shattered effect. Okay. So. The way we do that is triangles, triangles. So you can start at the edge and make a triangle. Now, hello, what's this? Oh, thank you, Reese. Reese's bringing me parts to my a thing I had over there. Okay, now we'll get your nose down, bud. Now, the thing about it is with triangles is you don't want them to touch. You want them to have a little gap in between. 
and you can make triangles any shapes you want, big or small, as long as you leave a gap between. You can come right up here against the edge if you want, or you can leave a gap at the edge and then draw, whoops, draw out. Let me try that one again. The dog distracted me. He's still trying to get that box. So if I do this, I come out, I come back. You can make equilateral triangles. All right, if you want. I like the thin triangles because I think it looks more like shards or pieces of glass. And you can do different directions. And if you end up with little tiny spaces, like I'm going to end up here with a little tiny space right there, you can put a little tiny triangle in there. All right? So this is my chaos here. This is my order. This whole thing over here will be chaos. But not this. So I have to work away my way around that. Okay, now I have one that I was working on at school. Okay. So, well, I started up here, and I started working my way down, and then I came over here, and I'm like, going, okay, let's work my way around this. And I did not trace this one yet. I should have, but I, I, got, um, I got excited about working on it. All right. So, after you're done... I'm not going to do all of it. After you're done with this, you have to go back and you have to trace. You've already got... Well, let, me, let me trace this one. I don't want to confuse you more than I already probably have. Um, so I'm going to trace this part with the fat marker. Whoops. Oh, I messed that up. Sorry, guys. The dog was moving over here, and I, he caught my eye. I was paying attention to him. I was telling him what I was supposed to be doing. Uh, sorry about that. So then you take a thin black marker or pen. A pen will work just as well. And you simply go over these. Now, I know... You're going to say, oh, man, Mr. Rover, that's going to take a lot of time. Well, good things do take time. I'm quite sure that the first time, if you play baseball or softball, the first time you picked up a ball, you didn't throw it perfect. It took practice. It took time to learn how to do it. Or kicking a soccer ball properly. It takes time to learn. Sometimes it's a short time. Sometimes it's a long time. But it takes time to make things right and good. I will not be tracing all this. <laughs> After you've got that done, you get two colors. Okay? One color for chaos. One color for order. One color for good, one color for bad. However you want to look at that. Um, I'm just going to grab... No, I'm not grabbing any of the ugly color. What it is... There it is! So I'm going to grab this blue and this orange. So, what I would do is this. Whatever color I choose to make my chaos... I'm going to go back and I'm going to neatly and carefully, staying inside my lines, color only the broken pieces. Now, because you've outlined this and you've left the little white gaps, it's going to show up really cool like it's been broken. Okay? The order side 
gets to be your other color. So that means all of this would be a solid light blue. That's what this is. Now, if you have a little tiny markers, you can use tiny markers. I don't, I don't mind. You can use tiny markers and fat markers, whatever you want. All right. So all of this would be colored in with my order color. And this would be colored in with my order color. The Native Americans have a saying about this. Or this, like I said, some people say it's order of chaos. Some people say it's good and evil. The uh, Native Americans have a saying that says there, inside of you, there are two wolves. One that's good and one that's bad. And then most people will ask, well, which one's stronger? And their answer is the one that you feed the most. So if you tend to want to do bad things and, and things like that, then you'll feed the bad wolf in you. If you want to tend to do good things, then you'll feed the good wolf in you. So, I mean, everybody has it, and every day it may come out a different wolf. You know, you feed a different wolf. Or you may come out with one day you're nice and orderly with just a little bit of chaos. Someday it's a lot of chaos, just a little bit of order. It just depends. But it's a choice. So, I won't bore you any more than I already have. So when it's all done... I made this example like two months ago. I made this when I made this product up because I was really super excited about doing this. This is my yin yang of order and chaos um, that I did for my example. I love lime green. That is my favorite color. Okay. And then I was going to use black. I was like, you know, I don't want to use black. I want to use a dark color though. And so I found a really nice blue that I had at school. And uh, I did my order and chaos. I did my yin yang of order and chaos and it's shattered and solid okay so i hope you had i hope you have a good time doing this i have i've done like i said i started this one at school um i've done two or three other ones and i might do one where i have little tiny ones going around it i just i like the design i, I like the design and i like the fact that it's round and triangular at the same time so make sure that you take your picture that you send it to me on my email. This is fourth and fifth grade, week two of the fourth nine weeks. Sorry I got to this one late, guys. Yesterday I went to down to hug my dog and pet him, and he jumped up at the same time, and he hit me in the eye underneath my glasses with his paw, and my vision was all wonky. So I was like, you know what? I can't, I can't function. I can't look at these lights every day. Like so make sure... That you send me your picture. Make sure that you're keeping safe, please. Hands clean, mask on, keep your distances. Um, oh, we're in the month of April. Have you ever heard April showers bring May flowers? Well, what do May flowers bring? They bring pilgrims. <laughs> That's a November joke. It's just using now. See you later. See you next time here at the home studio.